Hello, and welcome to Future Food with me, your host, Annalisa Winther. If you found this podcast, it's probably because you, like me, are passionate about food and you're curious about how we can use food as a vehicle for change to build a better future. This has been the focus of my work for the last few years. I'm an ecosystem developer, and everything I do centers around how we can unlock partnerships and collaborations within the food system. In my consulting practice, I advise corporations and investors who want to invest in the future of food, but may not know where to start or need help figuring out how to best use their capabilities to make a difference and make an impact. I also coach startup founders in the agri-food space, helping them to attract the right investors and develop their leadership capacity. And since I started this show, many of you have also slid into my DMs asking me how I created my career and how you too can transition into a career working on the future of food. So I also run a one-on-one coaching program called Creating Your Career, where I coach individuals, helping them to transition into and build their dream job working on the future of food. The best way to think of me is basically as a matchmaker. I work with individuals and organizations, helping them to connect to the ecosystem and build long-lasting partnerships that lead to good business and even better impact. This means that I get to talk to all kinds of people along the value chain. It's literally my job to do that. And I started this podcast because I realized how siloed our food system is. It's big, it's global, it's complex, and it's deeply interconnected, and yet many parts of the ecosystem never talk to each other. I believe that the future will be built on collaboration. That's the only way we can really create impact at scale on the timeline that we need to make things happen. And I started this show to share the stories of incredible organizations that I was meeting through my work. These organizations are doing amazing work, and they have such a clear vision for the future, but they also need your help to make it happen. So in every episode, I ask guests about their vision for the future, what we're missing to get there, and what help or collaborations they're looking for. They even share their contact information, whether they're an executive or a startup CEO, which you can find in the episode transcript linked in the show notes. And the reason that I do this is to democratize access to each other and foster collaboration. So if you love the work that a guest on this show is doing and you want to work with them, you're interested to learn more, my invitation to you is to reach out. That's the whole point of why I'm doing this. The listeners of this podcast have also had such good success doing so. Some have written me sharing that they found jobs, they've switched career paths, they went to get a new university degree, they launched partnerships, and they even landed investments. Who knows what's possible for you? And I know from putting lots of deals together that there is no better way to connect with someone than hearing their story. When we hear someone's story, it plants a seed and it also just brings us deeper into relationship. So this show is all about making it easier for you to make a move and get that first conversation going. The last thing I'll say before we jump into today's episode is that this podcast is listener supported. So if you love the content I create, or if this show has created value for you, maybe giving you a great idea, influencing how you think, even prompting you to get into some form of a new relationship in the space, please consider becoming a subscriber and supporting the show for a few dollars every month. Your membership will give you access to every single guest contact information, episode transcripts, exclusive content, and premium perks. And You can become a subscriber by following the link in the show notes, and you can learn more about working with me on www.analisawinther.com. Now let's go ahead and jump in. Greetings from Portugal. I am here to host the EIT Food Venture Summit, which brings together the leading entrepreneurs, startups, and corporations working on the European agri-food tech ecosystem. And I'm also here to deliver a keynote on the future of food. And amongst all these different conversations, I was thinking that it would make sense to share a mini-sode with you where I give you some insight into what I talk about when I deliver these keynotes. Since I started this podcast, I've interviewed over 100 experts on the future of food, asking them what they think the future is going to look like. And when I do these keynotes, they weave together everything that I've learned from these conversations 
And then I also add in some of my own thoughts and opinions around where the future is headed. So typically, I always start with a history of how we got to where we are today. How do we get to a food system that's responsible for one third of climate emissions? And then we switch gears to start looking at the future and really thinking about where is the industry headed? What are the amazing new technologies and business models that are transforming how we interact with our food system and really creating the future? So I was lucky enough to get permission to share 15 minutes of a keynote that I delivered this summer for EIT Sales Booster in cooperation with Catalyst Ventures. So I spoke to a bunch of different startups who are literally the entrepreneurs and the leaders that are creating the industry of tomorrow. And we talked about what are the new technologies that they can be inspired by and what do they need to be thinking about when they're designing these different products and ideas. So you're going to hear the first 15 minutes. It's going to cut off because I'm not able to share more than that. But if you're interested in a keynote for your organization, an inspirational talk, or if you need a host for your an event or a workshop, I invite you to check out my portfolio. You can find the link to that in the show notes, along with frequently asked questions I normally get. I'd love to engage with you. I'd love to work with you. And I hope you enjoy this little conversation about what the future of food is going to look like. We're going to talk about one of my favorite topics, which is the future of agriculture. I'm just going to bombard you with the optimism of what I see as the future of agriculture and why I think we work in the best industry and how we're all contributing to building a better future through food. So a little bit of background on me. I work as an ecosystem developer. So I've spent the entirety of my career looking at how can we build connections within the agri-food space to unlock innovation. And I do that in two ways. I work with a lot of corporate venture capital arms or corporate innovation divisions, helping them to figure out where they're going to build, invest, and partner. I coach founders like yourselves to get really clear on your vision, your communication style, your leadership style, so that you can come into better partnership with other people. And why I do that, and you'll hear me mention the word vision a lot today, is that for us to know where we're going, we have to have a clear North Star of what the future looks like and what our vision is for the future of agriculture and the future of food. And that's grounded by our values of how we approach doing business. And what I've seen in all my years of being a matchmaker is that it's very similar to when you go on your first date and you're sitting across the table, sipping your beverage and trying to figure out, does this person want to get married? Do they want to have kids? Do we actually align on what we want for the future? Because when you know those things and you agree, things can happen really fast. But if you're not in agreement, then it leads to not always the best outcomes and business is all about relationships. So a lot of my work helps people get clear on what's our vision, what are our values, are we aligned so that we can unlock all kinds of different opportunities. And as Greta mentioned before, some of you might also know me from my podcast, which is called Future Food with Annalisa Winther. If you scan the QR code, you can connect with me. And if you want to Instagram or LinkedIn today, you can find me on both plat platforms at my name, Annalisa Winther. But I have spent the last five years interviewing over 100 stakeholders who are building a better future through food. And in every single episode, I ask, what's your vision for the future of agriculture in 10 to 15 years, future of food? What are we missing to get there? What collaborations are you looking for? And how do you get in touch? The point being is that we need to work together to make the future happen. And oftentimes the food system can be quite siloed, both geographically and along the supply chain. So to break down those barriers, we need to be great storytellers. And I'm so glad you have sessions around marketing and sales and all those things, because that's what people emotionally connect to. But it also is going to take us working together in cooperation rather than competition. And I'm going to talk a little bit more about that today. So I want to stress this because for me, we really do work in the best industry. Working in this field, I meet the best possible people. And I think that's because food is the most powerful vehicle for change that we have. Why I say it is that, and I want you to think a lot broader about what food is, because oftentimes it's, a, especially agriculture, it's associated with a crop, something you're growing out in the field. And it is something that we ingest and we eat and we use for our health and well-being, but it's also the clothes on my back. It's also what my house is made out of. It's also my medical bills. It's also water and our societies and how we come together. Food is deeply political. 
it's cultural, and it's infrastructure. So when we talk about building the future of food, we have to think beyond just what are we eating to what are the systems that we have around that because it's so deeply integrated in our everyday lives. And I am going to have this be a participatory session, and we're going to do some games. This is the first game where I would love for you to guess what percentage of our planet is used for farmland? And I'm going to give you like five seconds to drop your answer in the chat and see if anyone is close. So what percentage, if you put a percentage in right now, what percentage do you think is farmland of the land surface area? I'm giving you five, four, three, I see 20%, two, one, 35, four, 30, 58. Okay. The answer is 40%. 40% of our planet is farmland. And that's nearly half of the world's land surface. And if we compare that to 300 years ago, and that's when the world looked like this for a little bit of context, we use just 7% of the world's land for farming. So what's changed and how did we get here that we're using half of the planet just to make our food and to make other agricultural products? That answer starts about 10,000 years ago, which is when humans began to farm. And this was a major turning point in history that enabled people to settle, to build, create, and start building civilization. And why is that when we settled and when we started to farm, we started to produce more food than we consumed. And in doing so, we could store food and we started to free up more of our time. And this was known as the first agricultural revolution. If we fast forward to about 100 years ago, we had another big turning point. This was the industrial revolution. And that's when we invented synthetic fertilizers, vitamins, antibiotics, vaccines, pesticides, new farming methods, new machinery, new ways to manipulate seeds, all kinds of innovation that created new economies of scale. And in doing that, we grew our food production exponentially. And it also became super easy for us to feed a growing population but it also had a lot of unintended consequences. And I think that's why a lot of us are in the room today is because we realize that this form of farming is pretty intense. It's based on exploitation, expansion, chemical agriculture, and it's destroyed our soil, which is the basis of life. Just one tablespoon of soil has 50 billion microbes in it alone. And we're just starting to really understand the power of soil. It's actually an up and coming area, even though it's something that's quite old and that has been around for a very, very long time. But what we're realizing more and more is that when we degrade soil, we degrade ecosystems. And because of the way that we've been farming, we depleted the soil that we had to cut down forests and destroy wildlife and water sources in order to expand the area that we farm. So much so that today, 75% of the Earth's land surface is degraded. And I'm sure you've seen it if you've been reading the papers, You've seen the drought conditions all across Europe that's also extended into other parts of the world. And there's such a deep irony in this because for us to do agriculture, that depends on a stable climate with predictable seasons. And when we've been farming in this way and we've been producing food in this way, we're undermining ourselves and we're destroying the conditions that make farming possible in the first place. So what's going on and how are we gonna get our way out of this? Like, what do we do next? And the answer there is that we need a second agricultural revolution, and that's going to look really different than the first. And all of you are of a part of it, and that's what makes me so excited about the future, is that there's great people who are trying to make a difference and really trying to change the way the system works. I'm going to give you a spoiler alert now that in all the people that I've interviewed and everyone I've spoken to in this space working towards the future of agriculture, there are three main trends that I see of what I think it's going to look like when I extrapolate all their answers and synthesize them and put them together. One is that the future is going to be driven by nature. We are going to be working with agriculture as opposed to against it, trying to control it. And that's because nature is pretty genius and really doesn't require us to reinvent the wheel. We have all the answers that we need already. If you've ever read Project Drawdown or come across that work, then you've seen the reports that say we already have all the technology we need to get ourselves out of the climate crisis. It's really just a matter of deploying it and investing the dollars to make it happen and changing our culture so that we embrace it. I also see that the future is going to be anchored in diversity. When I found out I was speaking to all of you and I checked out all your company websites, I was so impressed by not only the diversity of how many countries we have represented today on this call, but also all the different kinds of solutions you have. Because when we look towards the future, and if we even think about an ecosystem, diversity matters. We know that homogenous systems fail. 
they're dangerous. So we need diversity of thought, we need diversity of solution, and we need to be able to come together and accept all of those. For that reason, I'm gonna talk through a variety of solutions that are both high-tech and low-tech. And it doesn't always have to be complicated, going back to the fact that we don't have to reinvent the wheel here. And the third thing is that the future is going to be incredibly collaborative. I already see a lot of evidence of this. And I always like to make the analogy that if you look outside your window right now and you see any form of a natural ecosystem, you'll see that every single organism has a role to play. Each of them are valuable. And the same is gonna be true when we think of our role in the system is that we all contribute something unique. We all matter, we all make a difference. And we're all gonna collaborate in a win-win situation rather than a zero-sum game to build the future. All right, that's all for today. What'd you think? If you enjoyed this episode, leave a five-star review or a comment with your thoughts. You can also send me a message directly on LinkedIn or Instagram. I'm Annalisa Winther on both platforms. I also love hearing about your wins and what inspired you about this episode. So please share that with me as well. If you really liked it, consider becoming a subscriber of the show. Doing so gives thanks to me and also supports the creation of more awesome content like this. You can sign up to become a subscriber using the link down here in the show notes. And if you'd like to learn more about working with me, you can read about my coaching programs and investor services on my website, www.analisawinther.com. Thanks again for listening and a reminder to hit that subscribe button to be updated about new episodes. I'll see you next time.